I'm now going to apply the methods to a very widely used network meta-analysis comparing four treatments for promoting smoking cessation. There were three active interventions, which were self-help, individual counselling and group counselling. And there was also a control arm. The outcome was whether or not participants successfully gave up smoking at six to 12 months. In this network, direct evidence was available on all six pairwise treatment comparisons. The majority of the trials were two arm trials, but there were also two three arm trials with designs ACD and BCD. Although there are multi arm trials included in this network, all the comparisons in the multi arm trials also appear in one or more pairwise trials. So this means the number of independent loops is fixed rather than varying according to how the multi arm trials are parameterized. And this is the, the network that we did one of the polls on where I asked you to, to think about how many independent loops there were. So the number of independent loops here is equal to three, as we discussed before. I started here by fitting separate models to check for local inconsistency within individual loops. So in the ABC loop, for example, we estimate the inconsistency parameter as minus 0.34 with a standard error of 0.75. So the p-value is 0.65 and there's no evidence of inconsistency in the ABC loop. And here I've shown results for all seven possible loops in the network. Um, and we also find there's no evidence for inconsistency in any of the other loops. So, I mentioned earlier that although there are seven possible loops, only three of those loops are independent loops. And by applying our algorithm, we can show that ABC, ABD and ACD are independent loops. So we've then fitted a global model to test for inconsistency within these three loops simultaneously. The global model shows no evidence of inconsistency across the network. The set of independent loops isn't unique. Um, and I mentioned before that we can find independent loops by hand by taking, taking away one edge at a time and seeing which loop gets broken each time. And I expect you can imagine that there are different, we could take away loops, take away edges in a different order. And if we take away edges in a different order, we will find different set of independent loops. So here I've shown two more examples of fitting a global model to test for inconsistency within different sets of independent loops. Jointly splitting any set of independent loops produces the same model. And so the test for global inconsistency gives the same result in each case. We've explored how to visualize the results from fitting a global inconsistency model to help with interpretation of the results. And what we've proposed is plotting the set of independent loops split in the model using colors to represent the degree of significance of each inconsistency estimate. The aim of this is to help meta-analysts identify which treatment loops might be worth investigating for causes of inconsistency. Because the global model isn't unique, plotting just one set of loops could lead to over-interpretation of the results. So we'd suggest looking at multiple plots where each one plots a separate set of loops. These three plots correspond to three different global models that I showed. So in models one and three, we can see that the strongest evidence for inconsistency lies within the BCD loop because um, this loop has the the colour that's closest to the left of the colour spectrum. And the p-value is lower in this loop, much higher in the other two loops. But there's no significant evidence for inconsistency in, in any of the loops. This is just for illustration, really. Um, in model two, the, the p-values associated with each loop are very similar. And there's, again, no evidence for inconsistency. I'm now going to apply the methods to a slightly larger network meta-analysis comparing six treatments. 
um, here there were five active treatments for preventing diabetes and also compared with placebo. The outcome in this analysis was new cases of diabetes and there were four three-arm trials in this network. In this network, um, comparisons B, C and D, E are present in multi-arm trials, but not in any pairwise trials. So this means there are multiple ways to parameterize the global model, which could potentially result in different numbers of loops. So here we've made the choice that we will parameterize them in such a way that we minimize the number of loops, as I discussed earlier. We applied our algorithm to find a parameterization that minimizes the number of loops in the model. And this gives us seven loops. We've then fitted a global model to test for inconsistency within these seven loops simultaneously. And we found no evidence of inconsistency across the network. Again, the set of independent loops isn't unique. And I've shown two more examples of fitting a global model to test for inconsistency within different sets of independent loops. Jointly splitting any set of seven independent loops here produces the same model. And so the test for global inconsistency gives identical results in each case. Okay, so here are the visualization plots that illustrate the results from those three different models. In the first model, we see that the evidence for inconsistency appears strongest in the ABE loop, where the color of the loop is closest to the red end of the spectrum. In the second model, the strongest evidence appears to lie within the AEBD loop, while in the third model, it lies within the AFBE loop. And we can see from looking at these pictures that the strongest evidence for inconsistency is found in the same part of the network under each model. Um, and the p-values from the corresponding local tests for inconsistency within these three loops I mentioned are identical to two decimal places and equal to 0.11. If this p-value was smaller and um, showed a significant result, then investigators may be interested in exploring potential causes of inconsistency within this part of the network. I'm now going to apply the models to the Manga network, which is the much more complicated network I showed earlier in one of the polls where we're comparing 12 different treatments. So this network was comparing 12 antidepressant drugs for treating adults with major depressive disorder. The outcome in this meta-analysis was response rate at eight weeks, and the network includes two three-arm trials. In this network, the comparisons evaluated in the three-arm trials also appear in one or more pairwise trials. So the number of independent loops is fixed and it's equal to 31, as I mentioned earlier. And as we discussed in this network, it's very difficult um, to work out which loops are independent of each other without using an algorithm. It would be possible to do it by hand, but it would be very time consuming and easy to make mistakes. Using our algorithm, we identified a set of 31 independent loops and used a global model to test for inconsistency across the whole network. And we found no global evidence of inconsistency. As in the previous examples, testing a different set of independent loops gives identical results. For the Manga network, we haven't attempted to create visualization plots for the results from the global inconsistency model. Because the network is so complex, many of the loops overlap and would cross each other. And so the plots wouldn't really help at all with interpretation of the results. They would just be quite confusing to look at. So in summary, our proposed models handle treatments symmetrically within a loop and inconsistency terms are located within loops rather than um, nodes or treatment contrasts. The global model that we've developed is invariant to choice of independent loops 
and we've provided an algorithm for identifying a set of independent loops. When multi-arm trials are present in the network and include comparisons that aren't included in pairwise trials, we've chosen to minimize the number of loops in order to assign as much variation as possible to heterogeneity rather than inconsistency. This preference was based on choosing a model with fewer parameters in total, which may be simpler to interpret. Implementation of our model is less straightforward than some previous approaches, but we aim to provide tools to improve this. Because multiple different sets of independent loops produce the same global model, practical exploration of potential causes of inconsistency for any one set of loops therefore seems less meaningful. However, visualization plots can help with this by showing which part of the network shows the strongest evidence for inconsistency. In comparison with the existing global model for inconsistency, that's the design by treatment interactions model, our proposed model uses fewer degrees of freedom and may improve power when testing for inconsistency. And in future work, we plan to evaluate this in a simulation study. These are the references for the three examples that I used, and um, I'd like to acknowledge Andrea Cipriani for providing the Manga dataset to us. And finally, here are some references for methods that I mentioned through the presentation. Thank you very much for listening.